Hello there! Welcome back to the channel, folks. Whew, it's over. Thank the gods, it's over. Before we get started, if you're new here, welcome. Glad you stopped by. Grab a seat, stay a while. Before you leave, though, do me a few favors. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you know when the next video pops up. Smash the like button, and before you leave, drop a comment down below. And if you're one of the regulars here, welcome back. Glad, you, glad you're here for another round. I ask that you hit that like button, and before you leave, drop a comment down below as well. And share the video out on all the all the so socials. Let's get started. For the Keep Talking segment, um, talked about Sam Neill last week. But my little re research turns out the co-star of Sam Neill in the movie Dead Calm, Nicole Kidman, has a speech impediment. Interesting. I did not know this. Okay. Kenobi, episode six, the series finale. Oh, boy. Now, some folks are going to say that this was the best episode of the entire series. I can certainly see why. There's lots of key jangling. There's lots of member berries being tossed around. But there's still just conveniences. So we start off on Tatooine, where, frankly, the series should have never left. But that's just me. Reba is asking around. She's looking for a farmer named Owen. How did she get a Tatooine? How is she still alive? Hmm? We then cut to space where the refugee ship is being chased by the Devastator. Vader is unloading all his guns, all his firepower. The hyperdrive is... They're working on it, but there's not a lot of time, so Obi-Wan says... I'll go. I'll sacrifice myself. He goes off in a dropship because he knows Vader will come after him. Of which the Grand Inquisitor says, why are we going after just him? We can root out this entire network here. And Vader says he is no, no ordinary Jedi. So they come down this planet and Kenobi and Vader have their final fight before episode 4. They are both seriously in God mode at this point. Um, again, Kenobi, a couple episodes ago, could barely use the Force. And now he's lifting rocks and lifting sides of boulders and whatnot. And really going, going beast on Vader. Vader as well, going beast with his Force powers and whatnot. Um fighting styles Obi-Wan goes with his classic form 3 Vader going one handed using form 2 not his normal form but okay maybe the writers just didn't know this and it comes across at, toward the end um, Vader thinks he's buried Kenobi alive and they have one final exchange where Obi-Wan cracks the helmet, showing the face of Anakin in there. And at this point, they're mixing the, the words Anakin and James Earl Jones. They kind of splice them in and out. Okay, I guess. And Anakin almost forgives Obi-Wan that he is not his... Vader is not his failure. He didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. Vader did. But Obi-Wan let leaves him there again. As Vader is screaming Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan as he leaves. So I guess this closes that when I when I left you I was 
but the learner now I am th th the master I guess it's not how I would have done, done it but I'm not the writer meanwhile back on Tatooine where again the series should have never left Owen and Beru are preparing for Reva's arrival they hide Luke off in in the garage and Reva has got blasters hidden and tells Owen, you know, I, I knew this was, we, we all knew this would ha happen one day. We need to be prepared. Reva shows up. Owen asks Reva what she's out for. And Reva says, justice. She's going to kill Luke. That's her goal is to kill Luke to get justice. Is this implying that she knows that Luke is Anakin's son? How? This character seems to know a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And Luke runs off. He falls down, hits his head, is knocked out, and Reva has her lightsaber ignited. She's ready to kill him, and she can't do it. What, now you can't do it? Now you can't strike that final blow? You've spent years killing Jedi, Force-sensitive people, some of which have been children. Now you can't do it? And then she returns Luke to Owen and and Baru, and they take him back to the homestead. Obi Wan kind of forgives her. No, no, Reba, you don't get a redemption arc. You don't. And I know there's gonna be some folks going, "Well, well Anakin was irredeemable, and he got a redemption arc." Reva's not the chosen. Reva's not the chosen one either, is she? So, I'll just leave that one right there. We go back to Alderaan, and Obi Wan returns Lola. Sorry, returns Lola back to Leia, and then tells her that yes, he did know her parents, and gives. Her the best traits of Padme and Anakin, and that's what Leia is. But they must never speak of these adventures, because it could be dangerous. Because a ten-year-old is known for keeping secrets. Sure, they are. And I suppose this is the attempt to close that plot hole of General Kenobi. Years ago, you fought alongside my father during the Clone Wars. I guess that's a stretch. That's a big stretch. But again, I'm not the one of the writers. And when we go back to Tatooine again, Obi-Wan gets to meet... Luke for the first time, and then we get the little hello there, finally. And then, as Obi-Wan is going along to his new place uh, across the Dune Sea, he sees the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn. No, no, no. 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 Qui-Gon was never a Force ghost. And there's going to be someone, some folks who say, Oh, well, during the Clone Wars, excuse me, that was during the, the Mortis arc in Season 3, which Mortis operates outside of time and space. Rules don't, don't apply there. And the only other time when we heard Qui-Gon's voice was in the Yoda arc at the end of Season 6 
where Qui-Gon was a disembodied voice. Qui-Gon never became a full Force ghost. Mm. But again, seeing Liam Neeson kind of jangle them keys. So, my final thoughts on this series is this. Again, folks are going to love this episode. They're going to think it's the best episode of the entire series. They're going to think it closes up all the all the po- possible plot holes, that there's no stepping on canon, no stepping on lore. But that just begs the question, why did this show even exist if for five episodes they were dangerously close to doing all of that? The show was meant to be a launch pad for a new character and to f- focus on a younger ver- a younger ver- version of a ki- character because fuck Luke huh. we, we, we all know what Kathleen Kennedy thinks about Luke Skywalker so this series was like I said introducing a new ca- character and giving a backstory on a younger version of an established character, all while using a legacy character as the vehicle. The show didn't need to exist. Could it have could it have been a good story? Sure. Was it? No. But hey, those are my thoughts. Turning it back over to you now. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. And again, Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, smash the like button, and share the video out. I'll see you Saturday for an opinion or something. Who knows? Maybe another recommendation. I know recommendations have been happening all this month. You lucky people, you. Okay, so in the meantime, have a great rest of your week, guys. Always have fun. Hashtag keep talking. And always keep that smile on your face. (laughs) Toodles!